Peer Research welcomes the opportunity to present to you the following information on the construction of drilled shaft deep foundations. For most applications, especially in stiff clay, rock, or other media difficult to drive piles into, the most reliable deep foundation support method is drilled shafts, also known as drilled piers, caissons, cast-in drilled hole piles, or cast-in situ piles. Deep foundations are foundation units that provide support for a building or superstructure by transferring its load, either by end bearing the load to soil or rock at considerable depth, or by adhesion and or friction with the soil. This is accomplished through the use of driven piles or drilled shafts. Drilled shaft construction requires more experienced engineering and installation supervision than driven piles, but does not risk any of the ruptures, cracks, or vibrational damage to nearby structures that pile driving can cause. These entities, owners, developers, architects, general contractors, and designers are the beneficiaries of this type of deep foundations. Drilled shafts typically range from 1 to 12 feet in diameter, with the majority falling in the 2 to 5 foot range. They can be drilled to depths of more than 100 feet and are capable of supporting large loads both axially and laterally in both soils and rocks. Drilled shafts are created by excavating soil or rock using augers driven by mechanical or hydraulic torque. The shafts are drilled either dry, creating an open shaft in stiff soil or rock, or wet, using a slurry mix to keep shafts in loose soil open during drilling. In either case, the integrity of the shaft can be inspected prior to rebar placement and filling it with concrete. The soil adhering to this auger is stiff enough to allow dry method drilling. After visual inspection, a dry method shaft should be ready to receive a rebar cage. With the cage in place, the shaft is filled with concrete to create a pier that supports both vertical loads and lateral stresses. Drilled shafts have historically proven to be very reliable. They can be constructed virtually anywhere, even inside existing structures, with less noise and vibration than driven piles. Once drilled, the holes can be visually inspected. The completed pier has the structural strength to take seismic and wind loading and the need for pile caps is eliminated. Drilled shafts can be installed in any type of strata, above or below the ground water table, including sands, clay rock, cobbles, karst, collapsible soils, shrinking and swelling clay, compressible strata such as soft clays, loose sands, and even liquefiable soils. The applications for drilled shafts include individual shaft constructions for buildings and bridges, multiple shaft constructions for retaining walls, sound barriers, underpinning, slope stabilization, and seismic loading. Even in very loose soils, Drilled shafts may be used adjacent to the foundations of buildings that might be damaged by the vibrations of pile driving, and shafts can be drilled in patterns to create walls and barriers. Drilled shafts are used to create foundations for bridge columns throughout the United States and around the world, even in marine environments, to transfer loads to bedrock. To create the drilled shaft, there are several design and construction criteria that must be met. The quality and specifications of the concrete and reinforcement steel are critical. The construction technique used must be compatible with the soil type. Construction subcontractors must be experienced and knowledgeable of construction best practices. And to ensure the structural integrity of the finished pier, a critical but often overlooked requirement, the rebar reinforcing cage must be designed, fabricated, and placed to handle the axial and lateral loads the pier will encounter.
Designers rely on foundations to hold buildings up or down. The reinforcement inside a deep foundation holds the foundation together and strengthens it to full capacity. The location of the reinforcement behind concrete cover helps to protect the integrity of the reinforcement, primarily against corrosion. As loads are placed into foundations, they are transmitted to the soil through the friction of the pier and the surrounding soil and through the pressure against the bottom of the shaft. In order to carry force to the bearing end, the pier acts like a column inside the soil. When subjected to tension, such as high winds or as the result of an earthquake, a straight pier shaft resists uplift through skin friction. The reinforcement needs to stay intact to take the forces. If the shaft is belled or under reamed, the entire shaft can be in tension during storms or earthquakes as the uplift forces are restrained by the bell at the bottom of the pier. An under reamed shaft, also known as a belled shaft, is constructed with an enlarged base diameter in order to achieve greater end bearing resistance than would be obtained with a straight shaft at the same bearing depth. The construction of under reams involves the use of a tool to cut the enlarged base and can only be performed reliably in materials that will stand open with an undercut hole. The design of this type of foundation relies heavily on end bearing resistance. The nominal capacity of a drilled shaft pier, or resistance, R sub T, is the sum of the skin friction, R sub S, and the end bearing, R sub B. R sub B is computed from the area of the end of the pier and the bearing capacity of the soil. The skin resistance value is computed from the area of the surface of the pier and the estimated skin friction value. The skin friction value is a net value that should consider potential influence of soils as they wet and dry. In fat clay soils, the uplift on the upper part of a pier can cause shallow drilled shafts to be lifted from their bearing unless they are sufficiently deep and or under reamed. These are developed using values provided in the Geotechnical Engineering Report for the project. Geotechnical engineers use data derived by multiple test methods to estimate the bearing and skin friction used for design. Some of these tests are done in the laboratory and some as field testing. Soils also can be characterized by generic soil types that then form the basis for deciding which tests are done. Clays exhibit one set of characteristics. Sands and gravels have different properties. All of these variables are used to determine if the soils will retain shape when drilled or will require casings, shaft liners, to hold soils before concrete is placed, how large and how deep the minimum pier can be, at what depth the shaft should bear, the design values for resistance, and the expected settlement over the life of the structure. Penetrometer tests, SPT, CPT, are used to provide reference for the derivation of values. Lab tests are used to predict the way soils will fail under extreme loads. Deep foundations are less susceptible to global soil mass failures, but the bearing and friction values provided for design can be complex to impossible to determine with accuracy. What is known with some certainty are the forces imparted to the foundation by the structure. It is these forces that must be resisted. Designers need to rely on the geotechnical engineer for capacities, for properties of soils, and for soil profiles. Where there are water tables in the soil or the presence of cohesionless soils, those that can slew into a drill shaft during or after drilling, the kind of foundation and the work methods are different. Cohesive soils can be difficult to drill, but typically hold form after drilling. Rock is tough, but the payoff is typically very high bearing capacities. We have already discussed the way skin or side friction and bearing capacity affect the pier capacity. They also play important roles in predicting long-term performance. 
This long-term settlement under load often limits the design as much as soil strength. In addition to the dry and wet drilling methods mentioned earlier, there is also the casing method, in which a casing is used to maintain shaft integrity. The dry method is used on cohesive soils or rock strata with few cohesionless seams. With this method, minor water infiltration can be tolerated as long as no sluing occurs. The shaft can be visually inspected, construction costs are minimal, and construction speed is optimal. The dry method is also the simplest method of shaft drilling. The shaft is simply bored out, the reinforcement cage is set in place, then concrete is poured into the shaft and allowed to dry. The wet method is used when soils are collapsible or water-bearing and prone to falling into the shaft. The shaft cannot be visually inspected with this method and the slurry must be mixed precisely, so an experienced contractor is required. As the shaft is drilled under the wet method, it is simultaneously filled with a slurry such as bentonite, mixed heavy enough to keep the shaft from collapsing but still lighter than concrete. Then the reinforcement cage is lowered into the slurry filled shaft. The slurry is displaced by concrete poured into the shaft and the concrete is allowed to dry. In collapsible soils, the casing method can be used as an alternative to the wet method. In this method, a casing is inserted into the shaft as it is drilled to keep the walls of the shaft from collapsing and then withdrawn as the concrete is poured. In mixed strata of collapsible and non-collapsible soils, casing is used only to the depth of non-collapsible soil or rock. When a layer of caving soil lies between layers of non-caving soils, the shaft is drilled using the dry method to the depth of the caving soil, then the wet method is used to the depth of the lower non-caving layer. A casing is inserted and the shaft is drilled to depth. A reinforcement cage is inserted into the shaft. Concrete is poured up to the casing and the casing pulled out as concrete fills the shaft. Concrete is very strong in compression. Steel is strong in tension. Optimizing the strengths of both materials to produce a pier that is strong in bending requires proper design and placement of the steel reinforcing cage. The elements of cage design include the carefully engineered spacing of bars and connections, support beams, hoist straps, chains, side spacers, bottom spacers, test tubes, wire spacing, and wire connections. Before the cage can be placed, there are several issues that must be addressed. Drilled soils must be placed or dispersed to allow access. The floor of dry drilled shafts must be cleaned and tested. Fall protection must be in place. To ensure the accurate placement of reinforcement cages, centering devices and bottom spacers are used to guide the cage into the shaft. Proper placement of reinforcement cages is critical to optimize both the compressive and the tensile strength of the finished pier. The cage must be centered. To prevent corrosion of the cage, it must be three to six inches inside the concrete to prevent moisture reaching the reinforcing bars. 
The products offered by Pure Research enable proper cage placement. This presentation has been made possible through the invaluable expertise and contributions of these individuals and companies. If you have suggestions on how we may improve the content of the information contained in this presentation, we invite you to share your ideas with us. Our products are proudly made in the United States of America, land of the free, home of the brave. Peer Research. Thank you for watching. God bless America.